पद्मविभूषण डॉक्टर रघुनाथ आनंद माशेलकर सर टू काइंडली कम एंड एड्रेस दी ऑल दिस गैदरिंग ऑनरेबल चेयरमैन श्री पाटिल साहब ऑनरेबल जयंतराव पाटिल डॉक्टर डी आर मोरे डॉक्टर सुषमा कुलकर्णी distinguished uh, members of the board of governors distinguished members of the academic council distinguished faculty deans the proud uh, graduates of the day the equally proud uh, parents ladies and gentlemen i like to begin by congratulating all our young friends for not just getting a degree certificate in hand but crossing a very important milestone in your life a certificate is not just a piece of paper it is a testimony to the hard work that we have put in for years and it is opening up of a door of opportunity for you for your future and in your future you are going to build the future of india so i am actually addressing those who will be the builders of future of india i must uh, start by talking about uh, a little episode that took place about a year ago some of my friends sitting here will remember this you know there was uh, this uh, meeting among the scientists and there was a discussion what is the most powerful equation that scientific community has ever come across uh, come out with so somebody got up and said of course newton force equal to mass into acceleration f equal to ma you all remember this then somebody got up and said no 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 it is einstein e equal to mc square e is energy m is mass and c is velocity of light they are sitting quiet there and somebody said well dr mashelkar you are not speaking you are just listening i said no because i don't agree with what is being said he said what do you mean so i said no not newton not einstein what no newton not einstein what is that great equation that you have in mind i said the great equation is e equal to f so they wondered what was e what was f i said e is education and f is future education is future now that's what i'm doing so i must congratulate rit for building the future I must congratulate the parents for building the future of the children, and I must congratulate you for working hard in getting not just degree certificate, but that entire experience of learning in this great institution, which will stand you in good stead as we basically move on. Now you would say uh, you are a scientist. Uh, you have said uh, E equal to F. you have proposed an equation you have to prove it so i will prove it to you you know the proof came on 10 october 2011 and came in boston in us what happened on that day was uh, that the american academy of arts and science which was established in 1780 by the way by george washington and benjamin franklin they elect fellows of that academy and they only elect those who have done something special like winston churchill was a fellow charles darwin was a fellow einstein was a fellow nelson mandela was a fellow 200 nobel laureates were fellows so you might ask how many fellows from india from 1780 only seven so far from 
And what happened on that day was that the sixth and the seventh fellow signed in the register where other fellows have signed. It's a special form. You know who was the sixth fellow? Who gave the first convocation address? Radhan Tata. And you know who was the, the seventh fellow who signed? The fellow who is giving the third convocation address, Ramanath Mashir. So, Jendra, here is a challenge. Out of these seven, two you already got here. The remaining five you have to get down for the convocation addresses. But how, you will say, uh, we are uh, sidestepping uh, the point. How do you prove E equal to M? And that proof comes because of the following. That it is interesting that uh, it was Sir Dorab Tata Trust Scholarship of just 60 rupees per month, which I got in 1960 for six years. But for that scholarship, I was going to leave education because my mother, poor mother, could not afford my education. And that 60 rupees they gave for six years, by the way. That is how to study. That is how I am here. Now, interestingly, in 1960, somebody would have said that 50 years later, huh? 50 years later, the head of the house of Tatas were giving you that 60 rupees, and you, who is receiving that scholarship, will sign in the same book on the same page, one after the other. I would not have believed it. Now, how did this miracle happen? Because of the equation E equal to F. Because I was educated, I built my future. Of course, like we were saying in the, in the car, it's not just the education, it's the opportunity. So my young students, I want to tell you that it is not the degree certificate that is going to win you your future. You must seize opportunities. You must not only knock on doors, but if there are no doors, you will create your own doors, so as to say. All right? You have to create your own opportunities. So it is education plus opportunity that will give you basically the future. So that's why this is a very, very important day in the lives of the children, in the lives of these parents, and in the life of this great institution. So shall we collectively give a round of applause, a big round of applause to the future of this young generation. Now, as a convocation address, I'm supposed to say a few words of wisdom for you. So what I will do is that I will use my own lens of my own experience to share a few things with you. I think the first thing I want you to recognize is uh, that there are two goddesses that we believe, no? Ek Saraswati and Ek Lakshmi. Nega. Ya Bhagavan Madhya Prachanda Paraka. Lakshmi kari hi prasanna hote. Lot ni lagte, dusra kai tiri hota. Kahi na sangka hu shak. Saraswati cha prasanna hai. Saraswati chi puja tumi roz karayala pahe. And iti kutpalanta vahela pahe ni. Till the last day of your life. Till you breathe your last. That is my first message to you. The second message Part of my saying that today's generation, young generation, has got used to instant coffee. They want instant success. There is nothing like instant success. You have to work hard, very, very hard. Many people ask me, you know, what is the root cause of your success? I say I have worked hard, 24 into 7, day after day, week after week, month after month, Year after year, I am 72 now and I will continue to do that till I breathe my last. So there is no substitute to hard work. The third is uh, your ambition. For example, I want to congratulate the gold medalist today. Alright. Now, climbing Everest once is not good enough. You have to climb Everest practically every day. You have to work that hard. And your aspirations must be kept very high. 
My friend C.K. Prahlad used to say, who is no more, that there is what is called as a resource and there is what is called as an aspiration. And the aspiration has to be always above the resource. And as our resource goes up, our aspiration comes down. And that is the failure of individuals, of institutions, of industrial enterprises. So keep your aspirations high. Again, I will tell you a personal story in order to illustrate that point. You know, it was mentioned that I became fellow of Royal Society. Yeah, that is true, FRS. It's a very great honor. In fact, uh, when I became FRS, by the way, uh, I remember uh, uh, somebody saying, I mean, Sir Eric Ash wrote to me, said that now there are only two great things that can happen to you in your life. One is Nobel Prize, and second is death. One is certain, another is uncertain. That is how great that honor is. And you actually sign in the book where Newton has signed, by the way. All right? Now, when in 1998, as Jantrao said, I got it, I was very happy. And one of my mentors, my guru, is Professor C.N.R. Rao. Bharat Ratna, Professor C.N.R. Rao, by the way. So I went to him and said, Sir, I have become FRS. So I thought he will congratulate me, he will hug me, he will say, great. He didn't do anything. You know what he did? He said, not bad. So I was very disappointed. I said, what is this? He was such a great honor. And so anyway, I was disappointed. I came back. After that, I became fellow, I mean, a fellow of American Academy of Arts and Science. You know just now what I told you. So I thought he will be sort of uh, very happy. No, sorry. Before that, I became fellow of U.S. National Academy of Science. Again, there are only seven engineers from 1870, uh, seven scientists who have become. In fact, sometimes you get Nobel Prize first and then become that fellow. Like Sir Harry Croto got Nobel Prize first and then he became that fellow, you know. So I thought now he'll be very happy. So I went to him. He looked at me and said, not bad. I was really disappointed. And then I got this American Academy of Arts and Science. And then again he said, no. Then I lost my temper. I said, sir, what do I have to do? Do I have to stand on my head to impress you? And at that time he gave me a lesson which I want to pass on to you. You know what was the lesson? He said, Fashankar, you are climbing on a ladder of excellence. But mind you, it is an unlimited ladder of excellence. Right. And the limits can come. Limits can come only based on the limits that you put. So it is a limitless ladder of excellence. So my message to you is very simple. When you get success in your life, you know, upon alpha santushta asto, when you century dhali, it is halal. Manuza ekata sachin tenkul ka nikto, who makes hundred centuries, all right? But behind that, there is a lot of hard work, Behind that, there is an aspiration that I must do better and better and better and better and better and better. Alright? So my third lesson to you would be doing that. The fourth uh, point would be that education is about learning, doing and being. There are three things. Learning part of it, fine, RTI has taught you. But it is not just the ability, it is the attitude that matters. It is not just the mind, it is the mindset that matters. And being part means being a fine human being. Being a part of a society and that's very important. And that is why my fifth advice to you will be try to build three abilities as far as you are concerned. What are those? The first is innovation. And Jaitra, you rightly pointed out Innovation, because innovation is the key to the future. That's why I say always, I in India must stand for innovation. I in every individual Indian must stand for innovation. I in industry must stand for innovation. All right? That's the only way we can sort of move forward. So be innovative. Innovation means doing things differently, making a difference, taking risks, creating like what you said, doing things which are disruptive innovation, game-changing innovations, which will change the world not be happy by doing something which is, uh, you know, we say, uh, first to Shukravar Pet, sorry, first to Pune, no, first to Maharashtra, no, 
First in India, no, first to the world. All right, that is the innovation one. It's the second passion, passion in the belly. Without passion, you can't do anything. And third one is compassion, compassion in the heart. Compassion for the downtrodden, compassion for the society, and so on. And that is why, Tendra, I must say, today I was very, very happy to go around the exhibition when I saw your innovations that you have done. I would say inventions, not innovations. And you know what I was touched by? That you are thinking of removing the drudgery of the people who are resource poor, who needed help. But what touched me most, I will tell you, was the fact that you are not just looking for removing the drudgery of human beings, even that of a bullock. There was a design that was developed for removing the stress on the bullock when suddenly the bullock cart, you know, they break by uh, sort of uh, uh, a means which is not actually fair to the bullock and puts a stress. What it shows you is that it, 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 it is uh, something which is an inherent quality, particularly of an Indian mind, I must say that, where we are very uh, sort of compassionate about what we see. You know, everybody talks about uh, this turmeric victory. There's a bit of a story on that, by the way. What was the story? See, I remember I was uh, reading a paper, newspaper, and suddenly I saw that wound dealing properties of turmeric were patented by America. I said, how can they do that? My mother knew about it, my mother knew about it. An incident passed my mind when we were sitting in our NCR director's bungalow and suddenly a bird came and fell with a broken wing. And I still remember my mother running down and bringing haldi. You know, she made it into a paste and applied to that bird and that bird died after two hours and we were all crying actually when the bird died. You know? For one moment she did not think that haldi works on a human being like you but does it work on a bird? No. To her, a bird was the same, so she had the same compassion for the bird as I saw today for the bullock, as we see for the humanity. And I think that is a very important quality. So innovation, compassion and passion would be my fifth uh, uh, message to you. I am very ha happy to see what I have seen in the institute today. I came three years ago, I came today. I came in uh, June 2013, am I right? Yeah. June 2013. And I have seen a remarkable difference. You know, somebody told me, we only had three patterns then, now we have 26 patterns. Now, as usual, I will raise the ambition. No, 26 is not good enough, 260. And when you get 260, I will say, no, 2600. That is the way we should raise our ambition, so as to say. That is what I mean by keeping the aspiration high. And I'm very delighted to see that we are making sort of a great progress. Finally, what is going to matter for India, I'll be very honest with you. Simple things. Talent, technology, and trust. Take my word for it. Talent, technology, and trust. Let me explain each one of them. Indian talent. You know, I'll tell you, uh, United States of America had the economic growth, you know why? Roads and railways, that triggered the growth. Britain, textiles. Denmark, milk and milk products. Sweden, timber and timber products. Middle East, oil. Now if you ask me what is the oil for India, it is Indian talent, this talent. In fact, I remember when Atal Bihari Vajpayee used to say, India's future is in IT, IT as in information technology. I also used to say, yes, India's future is in IT, but not in information technology, but as in talent, Indian talent. That's the one that you see here. And it is supreme, we don't require a proof. Satyam Shivam Sundaram is happening. 
who is the CEO of Microsoft? Satya Nadella. Indian, studied in India, right here. Google, who is the CEO? Sundar Pichai, studied like this. Product, okay? So, maybe we have had uh, Satyam, Sundaram, we will have Shiva. I am not talking about Shiva Nadar, I am talking about somebody who will make a big difference. And maybe he will uh, be the chief uh, for Apple, for all you know. But once again, Tendra, what we have to do is to raise our ambitions. What was our ambition? Somehow or the other to go to United States, get a visa and go there. What was our second ambition? To get a job with Microsoft or Google. What is our third ambition now? To become the CEO of Microsoft and Google. What should be our fourth ambition? Forget about that. Create our own Microsofts and Google in this country. So, my young fellows, my young friends, I charge you with creating Microsofts and Googles. As you are reading out, we got jobs in TCS, we got jobs in Infosys, we got jobs in this, etc. That's fine. I would like to raise the bar. Again, you should not be seeking jobs, you should be creating jobs. And how do you create jobs? And I saw that in evidence today. Like, I was very happy to see. And Ravinda and I had a good time while talking to one of the entrepreneurs who has created a good product as to how to take it to the market because mind to market play journey is a very, very tough one, by the way. You can demonstrate a product in RIT, but to make it happen in the marketplace is a tough journey. And for that, we have to create an environment. How do we create the future Bill Gates here in our country? The future Microsofts here in our country? And that is when the talent, technology and trust part, the trust part comes. Again, my personal experience, anecdotal, I will tell you. About four years ago, I still remember the date, 12 November, Bill Gates had come to India. And four of us were invited to have a dinner with him. And it was a dinner come discussion, by the way. Who were they? Nandan Nilakani was one of them. Arun Mayra was one of them. Anand Mahindra was one of them. And I was one of them. And the discussion went on and Bill Gates said something very interesting. He said in Harvard University, he gave the commencement address. And in that, he declared that he was the most successful dropout from Harvard. Of course, he was the most successful dropout from Harvard, right? And then he recalled while he was young, he said there was a company in Albuquerque, those were the early days of computer, computer hardware was being manufactured, you know. They were going to manufacture computer hardware. So he said if they are manufacturing computer hardware, they will require software. So he phoned them up and said, I will give you the software. He half expected that they will keep the phone down. You know why? A young fellow of 20 and those early days of computer and he is offering software, come on, a joke. They did not keep the phone down. You know what they said? We are not ready. Come after a month. And you know what Bill Gates said? Thank God they said come after a month. I did not have the software that I offered. Tya company lad, ya tarun mula madhe vishwas hota. And ya tarun mula la atma vishwas hota. Vishwas, atma vishwas, trust. So, Jain Rao, we have to invest in our own trust. It is the trust. And we have to invest in them, we have to take risks. And that is my address to the parents also, by the way. Hey, Kalu Roko, we have to do this. No, please. Allow them to explore. You don't know where they will go, as a matter of fact. And in Bharata, we have to do this. 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 Failures. Somehow or the other. Sachin ne prathek matlab century kaatis paide. Nahi kaatni ki tajar criticism. You know, we are an intolerant country. So therefore, 
I would say trust is a very critical part. And Jandrav, if I can expand that, and you will understand it more than anybody else. If you ask me, the country today is not suffering from budget deficit. It is suffering from trust deficit. Trust between the politicians and the people. Trust between the industry and the society. You know? And somehow or other, we have to build a country, you know, which has a greater tolerance for failure, greater trust amongst each other. Without that, we cannot build. So that is talent and trust. Now, as far as technology is concerned, of course, we are an institute of technology. And I'm very happy to see the great work that is going on. But what is happening is that there is a huge rate of change at which things are happening. You know, just 10 years ago, we had just 10 or 15 million mobiles. Today, we have 960 million mobiles. Can you just imagine the rate at which things have changed, as a matter of fact? And technology is something that we are all using. So when our Prime Minister talks about digital India, many of us feel skeptical. I'm sorry. Let me narrate that incident that I shared with you in the car. You know, Rajiv Pawar, NIT chairman, by the way, uh, he and I were talking in Delhi. And he told me an experience which was very interesting, where he said that, uh, you know, I was walking on the street in Delhi. And I saw a poor old man, 75, 80 year old, sitting on the seat, footpath, and selling something, street vendor. But he was wearing very colorful clothes. So he went to him and said, May aapki photo ki sakta ho? So he said, ah, kari. Ah, that poor old man, 75, 80 year old, sitting on the footpath. So he took his photograph, click, and then he was walking away. He called him back. Zara saab bicha hai, yaha hai hai. Oh, jara mujhe whatsapp kar dije. Can you just understand what I'm talking about? So digital India is already happening. How many of you are on whatsapp? Just raise your hands. See that? See, and all the hands are coming up there, huh? not, not so many here. Good. So, technology is going to be a way of life, and there is only one way of life, by the way, digital way of life, in which things happen very, very fast. And there lies, uh, Jantra, the responsibility on our right. I'll tell you what that is. Recently, I wrote a paper called Technology 2050 for, uh, in Washington. There is a global forum that invited me to do that. Now, 2050 is too far off, isn't it? We can't predict what will happen next year. But they insisted that let us look at the long-term future. And one of the chapters on that is jobs. And technology is going to create new jobs as well as destroy jobs. And all the routine mundane jobs, which are based on logic, for example, will just vanish. In fact, again, telling Ravindra in the car that I'm the chairman of the awards selection committee for banking technology, Indian Banking Association. And I remember attending that panel discussion about the future banking. And I remember starting my address by saying, yeah, you are talking about future banking, but is there future for banking? Why? Once the mobile payments start coming out, you are not going to write a check with three people are going to check and after three days, no, this is instant. Everything is this or this now, basically. Instant messaging, instant actions, instant decisions and so on. So when that happens, number of jobs, including the back office jobs that we made money on, basically, they are just going to vary. Automation of knowledge work is going to come. Automobile industry, because you gave a lot of degrees today to the automobile industry. And I was just asking, do you have some courses on autonomous cars, driverless cars? And I was told, no, I think we should introduce them. Driverless cars, by the way, they look unreal, but they are happening. Next year they will be introduced as taxis in, uh, in uh, the city. And the business models are changing. What people are saying now, I don't want a car. I want access to the car. And that is where Uber comes. 
Alright? So people say that when I want the car that I need at a point in time, in, within two minutes, why the hell should I buy a car? So what is going to happen to automobile manufacturing then? I am a member of the board of Tata Motors and I am worried. Whom will I sell the cars if all of you will say that I will only have access, I will not have ownership. So that is going to change. The ownership is going to change. Because driverless cars are nothing but sophisticated computers on four wheels. Who is going to manufacture them? BMWs and Tata Motors and GM? No. They will be manufactured by Google. They will be manufactured uh, uh, by Tesla. They will be manufactured by Apple. You know? The entire insurance industry will change. The whole thing is going to change. So, Google, uh, uh, Uber will create uh, jobs for drivers and driverless cars, autonomous cars will destroy jobs. Some creating jobs, some destroying jobs. So one of the things we need to do in the college is that since we are talking about jobs, jobs all, all the time and we kept on saying they have got employment here, that, that's wonderful. I think that, that is how it should be. But we should start looking for the future and start training our students about the future. I said education is equal to future, but what is the future? You know? And therefore, I think we need to do some absolute radical thinking in terms of the way we move, if digital way is the way. And I'm very happy that you have taken progressive steps to blend digital learning with physical learning. That's wonderful because uh, there's no substitute uh, to that. But we have to be ahead of the curve uh, in, in, in this and start anticipating uh, the changes uh, uh, very quickly. I would like to end, because I've been given 20 minutes, I don't want to exceed that. I'd uh, like to end by just talking about India and finally, to me, it's one India, it's my India, it's India first. Okay, at the end of it, what is the purpose of our life? It's India. Right? And what is the kind of India we would like to see? and the future that we are going to actually build. I'd like to see an India which has ten characteristics. One is Suvidya Bharat. Education's future, I said already, so it has to be Suvidya. Second, Susaskut Bharat. Culture, our preservation of what we have, we have to sort of maintain it, no question. The third, Sushasit Bharat, governance, is the key, as a matter of fact. And we all have to contribute. I don't mind one of you, say, uh, when we asked you where are you going to go, he said IIS. We discussed that. I don't mind. Become an IIS, but create a Sushasit Bharat, governance. The fourth is Santulit Bharat. Santulit. Santulan. Development without destruction. Alright? Because growth, while it is taking place, we cannot destroy environment, we cannot destroy ecology, climate change is here, and how do you balance these two? Uh, very important. Next is Samruddha Bharat. We have so many people below the poverty line and so on and so forth. We must sort of lift them up. Sixth is Sanyam Shil Bharat. Apla Kutitri Sanyam Zatvaya Samaravat. Karan Sahishnu Bharat. या विषय अपन हल्ली जास्त बोला लगे कारण ती सहिष्णुता दिसत नहीं कुछ तरीके मिस भारत टिकना नहीं तस नहीं का सो संयमशील सहिष्णु भारत ये महत्व स्वच्छ भारत स्वच्छ भारत योजना है अपने कल्पना है इनफैक्ट देर इज अ कमिटी दैट हेज बीन क्रिएटेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया नाइनटीन मेम्बर्स आई हैपन टू बी द चेयरमैन ऑफ दैट कमिटी which is looking at drinking water and sanitation, technology that will be scalable, sustainable, affordable, rapidly deployable, and socially acceptable, basically. You know? But as we all know, it is not about building toilets, it's about using toilets. So that requires a mindset change. So it is social engineering, not just, uh, you know, technology based. So it is social engineering, system engineering that is important. But you cannot become a developed country unless you are that. Then, Sarva Samaveshak Bharat, inclusion, inclusive of all, Magashapur Bharat. 
we talk about growth, but that has to be inclusive growth, and we have to have accelerated inclusive growth. And it's all about the same thing. The current is that we are a good country, but we are a good country, but we are a good country, but we are a good country. सर्व संबंध तो पहला पहला ना नहीं का ये बहुत वाचा है अन्य सर्वात शिफ्टी मुझे स्वानंद जी भारत और संबंधी आदि तुम चकरे पर रात्रि जो भी देगा तुम्हारा इंटरनल एस वेल एस एक्सटर्नल हैप्पीनेस डेट इस द न्यू इंडिया डेट वी हैव टू बिल्ड सो दिस इस माय मैसेज अ टेन पॉइंट एटेंडा फॉर माय य but again, thank you, you for having me here. This is the first time in my life, there is always a first time that I gave away 656 degrees personally. <laughs> and I must say, there was a great joy in that. There was a great joy in that. Because I know, uh, Sushma, you were worried, you were trying to give me a glass of water, you were worried about whether I'll be able to stand, doesn't matter. I think it was a personal joy because this is a very special moment in your life. You get my point? Event like this will never happen. It is like your first child. It is like your first rain when you get a special smell. Alright? So this is your first degree. So as to say, you will never get another first degree. This is very special and you made me a part of it by making, you making me shake hands with these 656 uh, uh, young people who are going to be the builders of our future. So I want to really thank you. And the final point is, like I always do, people call me dangerous optimist. So therefore, as I said, we have to raise our aspirations high. Because if you think of the Everest, at least you will re uh, reach Kanchanganga. But if you think of Kanchanganga, you will reach Harman Tekri. Right? So let us aim at Everest as an ambition. And what should that be? And that ambition would be, I will not be there to see that in 2050, but 2050, our RIT should be ranked higher than the MIT of Boston. Thank you.